Okay guys, so I'm back in my grimace and it's been a hot second. But uh, today we're going to talk about physiological insulin resistance. And that's kind of like a weird thing because you know I'm in the gym and people are working out. But if I'm going through that response, that physiological insulin resistance response, my blood glucose is going to spike. You know what's happening sometimes when people go on keto and they have this kind of like weird like um, sort of kind of blah. <laughs> they have this kind of crazy response to dropping their carbs too soon and like people with opinions start saying that keto is not for everyone when really it's just a reaction to dropping your carbohydrates really fast. Now for those who've got thyroid and low T and PCOS and leaky gut, adrenal overload, yes, hypoglycemia. You guys are the types of people, and if you don't know if you're that, you probably have like a little finger freaking tip in that direction of being metabolically deranged. So what happens is you drop your carbs down overnight, you go from eating like whatever and having blood sugar dysregulation and issues managing, keeping your blood sugar at baseline, and you drop your glucose, and your body's like, oh, hell no. I'm just gonna shut down all these like lovely insulin receptor sites from gobbling up the glucose that is starting to rise. And I'm gonna go into a gluconeogenic effect and start to rise, and I'm not gonna allow any freaking glucose into glycogen in your muscles. How's that for you? And that's because your brain wants to get the glucose levels in back into the brain. It, you can produce ketones after six hours of not using carbohydrate, but I keep telling people, it doesn't mean that you're going to use them. If your body's not functioning properly, that's a stress response to cut your carbs out. So your body's just like, let's just turn all the lights off in the muscles and not allow glucose into the cell to become glycogen to, uh, yeah, to uh, fuel the body. So if you use a glucometer and notice that your glucose is over 80, or actually towards 100, 105, 115, 120 milligrams per deciliter, or we're talking like 5.2 and higher millimolars in your glucose, that's that physiological insulin resistance response. And so people are freaking out. They're like, oh my God, I feel terrible. And yes, this is what you could say is sort of the uh, keto flu, which is why I often say to people, graduate yourself down. Now recently, recently mm -hmm. I created downloadable keto plans and one of them was for metabolically deranged. Now this is designed for people to graduate themselves down so you don't have this insulin resistance response. Because when you have that response, when your body's blood glucose rises, but insulin is not driving it into the Krebs cycle, you feel awful, you feel terrible, you feel exhausted. It's in your sleep, you're like wasted in the morning. But you probably already had those symptoms before and then they're just gnarly exacerbated. So that's it guys. I'm always doing never quick videos on ketogenesis, just little tips. I wanted to talk about uh, the physiological insulin resistance response when first trying keto. Now remember, keto is designed for everyone because it is our primal response to uh, let's say not dying so you have to be able to use ketones but since we have been raised in the modern obviously society look at that dome dome um, since we're raised up in the modern society our bodies have over freaking become stimulated the adrenals are whacked out people have leaky gut the gut biome is messed up and these are also reasons why people's glucose numbers are too high so when you're trying to keto adapt, stop using urine strips, stop wasting your money at the drugstore even though they're cheaper, and go for the glucometer. Not only do you want to check your glucose or your ketones, but you also want to check your glucose. For me, glucose is more important as a keto coach because I can tell if you're having that physiological insulin resistance response or I can just tell if your adrenals are shot.
they're slow, they're sluggish, which probably means that your liver isn't functioning properly. And when your liver's not functioning properly, I can't talk, then your kidneys are not functioning properly. And that probably means that you have a gut issue. So let's figure it out. Let's get you cleaned up so you can stop thinking that keto is for, not for you because a lot of you guys crave sugar when the adrenals are not functioning. A lot of you guys crave sugar and have carb addictions when, what? You have candida. A lot of you guys are craving sugar when your dopamine receptors are damaged and your serotonin levels are too low. These are all the ways that your body tries to raise glucose levels back up and then it shuts off the ability to use the darn stuff. So then you have high blood sugar and you feel awful. So if you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com or Stephanie the Business Person on my Facebook fan page or Stephanie Ketogenic. Yo, and I was like doing some muscle ups today. I feel freaking I feel freaking awesome. I feel freaking spry. I've got energy for days at the age of 47, turning 48. And I think you guys should at least learn about ketogenesis because somebody in your family has some kind of issue, depression, disease, something. Way more than just fat loss. And there's a big difference between Atkins, paleo, and keto. Boom. Peace out.